Hi, it's me again, uh, Rich Smoker here, uh, joining me in the, uh, the Hall of the Ward Museum in the Fleckenstein uh, Decoy Study Gallery. Um, just before my esteemed colleague, the Doctor of Duckology, Dr. Daryl Hager, will be taking over here shortly and talking to you about the Susquehanna uh, Flats and the Upper Chesapeake Bay. There's a couple of birds in his case that I find very interesting, that I enjoy looking at. So I thought maybe I could sneak in here before he says something and uh, do it that way. Uh, we've got a couple of birds in here from New Jersey. Uh, there's a Harry M. Shorts, uh, a black duck, and he was from Ocean, Ocean City, uh, New Jersey. His uh, grandson was actually, uh, we share something together. We were both, uh, um, uh, inducted into the NEA um, uh, Heritage Fellow, um, and you know, I'm very much uh, ecstatic to be involved, be involved with both uh, uh, Harry Shorts and the other one, the only other carver that's been inducted into this is Lim Ward. So I am in great company, and uh, as soon as these other guys figure out that I'm in there, they're probably going to quit, but we won't go into that. Um, Another one uh, from New Jersey is Mark Keyers. Um, you can tell these Jersey decoys because they're hollow. They've been split down the center um, and they, they hollowed them out with a gouge and a chisel. Um, and you'll find on the bottom there's a pad weight that's generally uh, uh, put inside the decoy itself so it's recessed on the bottom. They're very light uh, for the idea of carrying them in a uh, sneak boat. Uh, whether it be a barnegat or a different type of sneak boat that they would use on the coast. Uh, they're very, very light birds and very well built. Uh, they're glued together with white lead and put with nails put, uh, uh, put through the, uh, the, both the seams to hold them together. Now our shorts here is uh, seen as better days because its bill's broken off, but you can see the overall shape of the bird, uh, which is uh, probably the most exciting thing as there is. I find it very, uh, very neat. I, I like looking at uh, New Jersey decoys. We slip over to the other side, and before Daryl gets here, we have two more um, on the top. We have an Ellis Parker from Beach Haven, New Jersey. You can see the overall shape of it. It hasn't been uh, um, modified whatsoever. It's an original paint. Um, and you can see how round and smooth it is, and uh, uh, it's uh, well-built decoys. But that's one thing I found with Jersey birds is most of them are very well-built. They were uh, meant to be used over the course of different seasons. Then we have one side of it, an old squaw, that came from Jersey but was used on the Delaware River. by Mark English, uh, carved by Mark English. That's an original paint too. That's a beautiful little bird. Hard to find. We have uh, on the bottom of this case too, before I get uh, Daryl pushing me out of the way, we have a cat in uh, Joshua Travers, who did a lot of uh, uh, cork decoys. He was from Vienna, Maryland. Uh, hunt in the uh, Vienna marshes, uh, which are broad and expansive, and, you know, running all the way up to Sharptown. Uh, um, and when you get down below Vienna um, Marsh, is a good thing to say because it is big, <laughs> interesting. And I think Daryl's going to jump in here soon, so I'll get out of the way. Hello, I'm Daryl Hager, and I would like to. Um, take over where Rich Smoker left off in his discussion of some of the decoys from the upper Chesapeake Bay that are in the collection of the Ward Museum of Wildfowl Art in Salisbury, Maryland. Before we turn directly to those decoys in that uh, case, I would like to begin by bringing your attention to a Ben Dye decoy here that has two brands on its bottom. Uh, one brand is Widgeon, which was the name of a gunning scow, and the other brand was P and M. The and is the ampersand sign for and. 
Uh, and these brands are significant because uh, the Susquehanna Flats, which was perhaps the most significant gunning area in uh, the United States, was known for appealing directly to wealthy sportsmen from Philadelphia and uh, and New York. And they came to this area and they were uh, housed on these gunning scows, which were essentially floating hotels. Um, and this uh, brand, P&M, uh, represents... Uh, uh, Harry Polemus from Philadelphia, who was the owner of the Gunning Scow Reckless. And the M stands for Captain William Billy Moore, who was the captain of the Reckless. As I said, these these Gunning Scows were essentially floating hotels. The Reckless, which is the most famous scow from the area, had its own bone china. Uh, and meals were served on that china on a large table that was covered with a fine linen cloth that were embroidered by the name of uh, of Reckless. So these uh, uh, scows were very elaborately appointed. And many of the decoys from this area uh, have brands which enable us to link the, the decoys to particular gunners or boats or gunning clubs and, uh, and, and so forth. Uh, notice next to this Bendai uh, decoy, there is a uh, blue wing teal hen by James Holly. Uh, teal decoys are extremely rare from the upper Chesapeake Bay. And uh, this is a particularly noteworthy example of the uh, holdings in the museum. Uh, James Holly was the oldest son of uh, John Daddy Holly, who is known as the founder of the Ham de Grace School of Decoy Carving. Uh, the other school in, uh, famous in that area is known as the uh, Cecil County School of Decoy Carving. And at, uh, at some time in the future, we'll talk about the distinctions between these two schools. But now we can turn our attention to the decoys in this uh, case on the Upper Chesapeake Bay. Um, things that, the first thing that we should note is probably the three decoys by Madison Mitchell. Madison Mitchell is, I, I suppose, the most prolific carver uh, from this area because he extensively developed the use of a duplicating lathe, which enabled him to turn out tw roughly. Uh, 12 decoy bodies at a time, and he was essentially you know, mass-producing decoys and produced thousands and thousands of them over his lengthy career. The museum has uh, uh, three decoys by him. One is this uh, coot decoy, which is, again, a very rare species by uh, makers in this area. And then there uh, is a pair of canvas backs uh, which was donated by the maker, Madison Mitchell himself, to the museum. Uh, Mr. Mitchell uh, was was good, f uh, was a close friend of the Ward brothers, and they exchanged decoys and paintings and other uh, artifacts. Also in this case, we have uh, a canvasback drake by Jess Urey, uh, Jess Urey is from Rock Hall, Maryland, and uh, Rock Hall was the center of another uh, carving school, which included uh, uh, John Glenn and, and August Heinefeld. Um, also, in this case, we have uh, a pair of canvasback decoys by Charlie Bryan. The hen here is in the rare uh, preening pose. Charlie Bryan was from Middle River, uh, which was a little south of the Susquehanna Flats, closer to Baltimore. Uh, Charlie Bryan was, I think, the first person to notice that uh, the carvers for decades had been carving the heads of the decoys incorrectly in that most carvers carved the bills of the uh, uh, ducks wider than the heads themselves, the cheeks. Charlie Bryan was the first to actually carve the cheeks of his decoys 
wider than the bills. So he was uh, a, a significant carver in that he would made an, a, a, an anatomically correct adjustment to uh, to the carving. Also in this case, we have a pair of decoys in original paint by uh, George Washington Barnes, known as Wash Barnes. Wash Barnes lived on Carpenter's Point in Cecil County, right on the Susquehanna Flats. Um, and he's one of uh, the Charlestown five or six uh, famous carvers, depending on whether you include uh, um, uh, one of the minor ones. But uh, these decoys represent the uh, Cecil County style in, in that the the uh, tail does not flip up at the end and it's sort of in line with the main chine line of the decoy. And um, George Wash Barnes was such a notorious character that he once got into an armed conflict with uh, the, the members of the uh, uh, game police and uh, the, the, a truce had to be uh, enforced by local authorities from, from the area. But uh, many of these carvers led very colorful lives in this area. Uh, another pair of uh, canvas backs in this case were carved by James Courier, a contemporary of, uh, of Madison Mitchell. And uh, Mr. Courier was also postmaster of Havre de Grace. Most of these carvers, I should say really all of these carvers, uh, had other occupations. They did any number of things to earn a living, and, and decoy carving was uh, a secondary part of their uh, their livelihood. Another area in this case has um, decoys uh, by another decoy by James Holly. This is a high head canvas back drake. Uh, the high head decoys were generally placed uh, near or in front of the uh, the the sink boxes. The, um, sink box hunting was outlawed in 1918. The sink box was essentially a floating coffin, and the gunner would be on his back in the wa uh, in the uh, sink box, essentially underwater and would sit up and fire as the uh, the the wild file came in to the rig of decoys these sink boxes generally put out rigs of 4 to 500 decoys each so there were literally tens of thousands of decoys each year uh being used at various stages in the uh, uh in various sink boxes in the Susquehanna Flats area Another decoy in, uh, that's uh, nearby this uh, case is one by Leonard Pryor. Uh, Leonard Pryor was from Chesapeake City, uh, uh, Maryland, and uh, he was influenced by the Locker Brothers from the area of Elk Neck uh, near uh, the town of Northeast in Cecil County. Uh, also in this area is a uh, black duck by uh, Robert Bob McGaw. Black ducks are also uh, uh, rare decoys from the Susquehanna Flats. Bob McGaw was a very significant uh, uh, carver from Haver de Grace. And finally in this area there is a pair of uh, uh, canvas back decoys in original paint, outstanding original paint by Sam Barnes. Uh, Sam Barnes was uh, the carver who uh, taught Madison Mitchell to carve, and it was uh, the, the, uh, Sam Barnes who, uh, when he passed away, uh, uh, left all of his unfinished jobs to uh, to Mitchell and got him uh, started on his career. This particular pair of decoys is significant in uh, in my life because it's the first pair of decoys that I ever encountered uh, uh, when I first visited what was then the uh, Ward Museum uh, located on the campus of Salisbury State College in 1975 probably um, so, and I will go into more discussion about these decoys in, a, in another episode later 
But I hope you have an opportunity to come to the Ward Museum of Wildfowl Art to look at not only these decoys from the upper Chesapeake Bay, but the extensive holdings that the museum has of decoys from across the United States. Uh, and I encourage you to uh, to take an opportunity to stop, stop by here uh, as often as possible. Thank you.